Welcome to Tan Talks, covering the latest global news from a Taiwan perspective. I'm Abra Cho. China's Global Times reported that tax authorities are auditing Taiwan-based iPhone maker Foxconn. There's been speculation that these actions aim to pressure Foxconn's founder, Terry Guo, an independent candidate running in Taiwan's upcoming presidential election. Could this shake up Taiwan's presidential election? Joining us today are Leonard Zhao, National Tsinghua University adjunct professor, Taiwan People's Party, Mainland China Affairs Committee Chair, and former Taiwan Ambassador to the Kingdom of Istuatini, and uh, Courtney Donovan Smith, political analyst specializing in Taiwanese politics. A very warm welcome to both on the show. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Uh, Foxconn Group's founder, Terry Guo, is an active contender in Taiwan's 2024 presidential election. Uh, concurrently, his company, Foxconn Group, is undergoing a tax investigation in China. So what could be the reason behind this? I mean, could it be that China won't go to withdraw his bid? Maybe that one first. Yeah. Yes, absolutely, that's what's going on. Um, the Global Times, the nationalistic mouthpiece of the Chinese Communist Party, they were discussing, uh, they published at, at least five pieces uh, on this and they signaled quite heavily what their intent is. So here's a little bit of a, a quote. The investigation is normal, but it may impact the elections, said experts, noting that if the secessionists who seek Taiwan independence win the elections, that would be a huge disaster to the peace and stability of the region and the Chinese people of both sides of the Taiwan Straits, including the ones in the business circle should work together to prevent disaster from happening. Mm -hmm. Now that wasn't the only piece where they were signaling, uh, but they made it quite clear and uh, outright e explicitly talked about how their, the opposition is split three ways. Mm -hmm. And so th it was really quite clear what they were signaling and what they were trying to get across. Mm -hmm. However, uh, Terry, Terry Guo only has 12.6% uh, ownership in Foxconn right. and he's no longer on the board and he's no longer the CEO. So I don't know how much leverage that gives them. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Ambassador Zhao, so what's your take on this? Uh, you think that China <coughs> is going to put pressure on him? To, to well, withdraw? I think uh, <coughs> to answer this question, uh, we can uh, talk about the twofold, you know, what, two dimensions. First, on the business front, Terry Go uh, has been successful entrepreneur without any doubt over the past few decades. So he has been considered the number one of the leading, okay, Chinese entrepreneurs, if not a protagonist. Uh, but however, his uh, image, okay, has somehow suffered a certain amount of uh, controversies mm. because the way he behaves uh, rather high profile, if not arrogant. Sometimes, it's sometimes you know, uh, because occasionally, uh, you know, he has been, uh, you know, uh, in public, and, you know, uh, boasting his, uh, his, his power, his popularity that, mm. you know, I can help, okay, men in China more than the other way around. I can help the Chinese government more than the other way around. More than Chinese government can help me, and also that I what I can do is more, much more important, much more powerful than those of the uh, you know Taiwan office, Taiwan affairs office in the State Council in Beijing. That somehow stirs some of you know the kind of a, you know a mixed feelings from the the Chinese authority. So as business from he's a yeah he's a successful business, but however he has some you know has been a controversial figure in in China. And secondly, in the political speaking, he has been running, as has been indicated. That so uh, that's uh, because China, as, mi uh, as my friend mentioned, that the, the Chinese government is concerned about the, the what's going on in the in the presidential election. You know, uh, the the season in Taiwan. Yes, Chinese government is uh, uh, is not okay. Uh, you know, uh, getting along with the current administration, DPP, right. obviously, mm -hmm. and he hopes to see you know, the DPP being depowered, okay? And uh, of course, he likes to see some opposition party, opposition, you know, a coalition coming up okay. to uh, depower the DPP uh, administration in the coming election. And then at this moment that, you know, the uh, Kerry Go come in as a kind of a political disruptor, mm -hmm. disruptor that can somehow, you know, undermine the uh, kind of, uh, you know, the strong unity, the strong, uh, you know, alliance between the so-called blue team and, uh, and white team. So they consider that as a political, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, hitman, put it this way. So he doesn't, the, the Beijing office doesn't like 
the way you know Terry Gore is behaving politically. So these two four you know uh, factors you know kind of blend in into so this time although the Chinese authority announced that it's a, it's a routine mm. investigation right. for a tax you know uh, a violation or whatever. However, the timing the timing for this announcement for this operation is too vulnerable mm. to some you know uh, you know some any reasonable doubt. Right. Okay, that is a, in, is a very obviously you know, nothing but the Chinese political manipulation. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, but it's, so it's, not, it's not the first time. We have seen okay. over the past few years several incidents that Chinese authority will come to uh, you know, take some actions against a certain uh, Chinese, you know, Taiwanese gov uh, the communist and Chinese uh, Taiwanese business people. It's a seemingly a retaliation okay, uh, for, the, uh, for, some, you know, for their political positions. So, so in this in this context, you know, I think that that's obviously a very very uh, you know it's a very strongly uh, indicated that the Chinese is up to something politically. Okay, sure. Um, even though uh, many would agree with uh, Ambassador Zhao's uh, uh, statement that um, the CCP wants to see the opposition coalition to mm. happen, right? Mm. But uh, Ke Pi, which is the uh, chairman of the TPP, mm -hmm. actually uh, is from the Green Camp, which is like. A uh, affiliated with DPP. So uh, would you still say that uh, uh, Xi Jinping, for example, he is willing to see uh, Ke Pi or uh, the mayor Ke used to be a Taipei mayor on the same ticket with uh, Hou Youyi? Uh, maybe, maybe Donovan, you can answer this question first. Um, I, I think that from Beijing's perspective, I don't think they're particularly happy with either Hou Youyi or with Ke Wen Zhe. Mm -hmm. um, Ke Wen Zhe, he came originally out of the Pan Green came out, out of, I mean, he cooperated with the, the DPP in right. 2014 in mm -hmm. the, in the uh, Taipei mayoral race. But in recent years, he's been talking a lot more, sounding a lot more like he's l at least light blue. Um, or as, uh, but he says, he, he, t he talks a lot about being a centrist. Mm -hmm. uh, but being from Taichung, I, to me, he sounds like a Taipei centrist, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, which is light blue. Um, he also talks a lot about how much he hates the, the, hates the new Tide faction mm -hmm. in the DPP. Mm -hmm. So recently, I think he's shifted more toward the blue camp. But frankly, it, it, in Beijing, I think they really just don't know what to make of him, would be my guess. Mm -hmm. um, he's a little bit unpredictable. His comments right. are some, sometimes contradictory mm -hmm. um, <coughs> uh, on, his, on relations with the United States and with uh, China. Sometimes he's, he talks, says that it's more important to be closer to the United States uh, because of the tensions with China. And sometimes he said that, that to Taiwan should remain equidistant between mm -hmm. the two sides. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not sure that, that Beijing really knows what right. to make of it. Yeah, so uh, Ambassador Zhao, uh, given your personal experience with the TPP, do you think that even uh, Ke might become a presidential candidate combined together with uh, Ho Yo, you, you think that CCP is going to be happy about this? Well, uh, uh, you know, I although I'm with the uh, I'm affiliated with the, the Taiwan People's Party uh -huh. as a volunteer, uh -huh. uh, helping uh, you know Chairman right. Ke for his uh, for his international affairs, and but um, I'm also in charge of the uh, the cross you know straight affairs, mainland China affairs within the party. Uh, from the uh, from the intellectual perspective, okay, I'm purely you know telling my personal observation of you know opinions that yes, I agree that there was a, there was a time that you know. A you know, the men in Chinese government, they are, they are not aware of, they don't know Ke Pi well, uh, as, com as opposed to their acquaintance with the KMT over the past few years. They know KMT very well, you know. And then, uh, as in comparison, they know uh, DP TPP or uh, Ke Wenzhou himself are much, you know, uh, less, you know, uh, and uh, much less acquaintance. However, over the past few, uh, past few several months, I can tell you honestly, yes, I've been traveling, okay, to China several times, talking with the, 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 the Chinese friends there in mm -hmm. Beijing. They are getting better acquainted with uh, Ke Wenzhe. I think, take one thing for example, that the, C, uh, the CCP uh, authority, they are confident. Mm -hmm. I mean, you might, might be surprised I use this word. Yeah, they told me that they are, they are appreciative to uh, to uh, Ke, Ke Wenzhe. In terms of Ke Wenzhe's, you know, uh, continuous, okay, the conference for the dual city conference, mm -hmm. Shanghai and right. Taipei, mm -hmm. over the past you know, nearly eight years, 
without any any uh, you know suspension even during the the covid period three years time still the conference the dual city conference still taking place without any any breaks maybe online but that is under the uh, the tre you know tremendous amount of uh, opposition mm. from the city councilmen mm. within the taipei city council of course that dpp the opposition dpp uh, city councilmen would be against Kevin just, you know, uh, insistence on the holding the, the dual city conference. Mm -hmm. But even the KMT, ironically, KMT, okay, which is sup sup supposed to be for the, uh, for the for dialogue between two sides. Right. But this conference has remained as a one and only, you know, a dialogue okay. channel okay. between the two, two uh, you know, uh, you know oh sorry, two, two, two sides of time straight. But the, but the you know, Kevin uh, has been under, you know, okay. this kind of position. So that is the point. That my my friends, you know, uh, the friends in in Beijing and also in Shanghai, particularly Shanghai people, the Shanghai, you know, Taiwan, okay, affairs office people, the leadership told me that they are very grateful. Okay. I think they trust, you know, Ke Wen -Zi, sometimes even more than they trust KMT. All right, that's a, that's a new information. But anyway, yeah. let's come back to Terry Guo himself. Do both of you think that given uh, his performance in polling on average around only 10%. Yeah. At the end of the day, you think he will choose to withdraw from the election? Uh, briefly. Donovan. Well, <laughs> I, uh, um, the ambassador uh, uh. described him well. Um, <laughs> uh, he's a, a larger than life character. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, yeah, quite arrogant. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so it's a little bit hard to tell whether he will or not. But I, I get the feeling that the reality that he is polling, you know, and for Taiwan News, I prepare a, ta a, a weighted poll of polls, which now has him at 8.66%. Mm -hmm. I, I get the sense that he is laying the groundwork mm. for a dignified exit, mm. a face-saving exit. Mm. Uh, he's talked about how his, um, his uh, pr presidential, vice presidential candidate, Tammy, Tammy Lai, that she'll be running to the end. And I get the sense that he's hinting of working at some kind of deal with Ke mm. uh, where she becomes the vice presidential candidate. Um, now he's also said, and this is quite interesting, he said that there's all, he agrees with almost all of uh, Ke's thinking. Mm -hmm. He also said that there's a lot of room for cooperation. He's also said that there, there's, there's no concern about talking about who will be at the top of the ticket or not. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm getting that sense that he's looking for a face-saving way out. Mm -hmm. um, some possible deals, Mirror Media just came out with uh, a, uh, yesterday there's three proposals from someone within the, uh, within the TPP mm -hmm. put forward, although there's no sign that, that Coenza has, has signed off on these or or Terry Go has either, um, but there's there definitely seems to be a lot of room. For example, uh, Terry Go could be uh, offered uh, the premiership, mm -hmm. or right. uh, one of the proposals that came forward is that he becomes a special envoy, mm -hmm. uh, like Morris Jung at right. APEC, um, or that he becomes the vice presidential nominee. But the idea is that he would be given a brief or some kind of influence over the administration. Right in it was foreign policy, economics, and uh, cross-strait relations. Mm -hmm. Well, a simi somewhat similar question to ambassadors that yeah. actually Terry Gore has been perceived as a uh, practical, you know, uh, under one China respective interpretations, that so-called principle of 92 consensus, 1992 consensus. Mm -hmm. uh, so China's uh, ongoing investigation into FASCON really raises the doubts that, uh, do you think that Terry Gore really, if he ever has the chance to become president, has this, this capability of negotiating or communicating with Beijing? Well, it's a uh, pros and cons, <coughs> pros and cons, because uh, Terry Guo, he, uh, you know, uh, he used to uh, criticize democracy. Mm. Well, for like, democracy cannot feed the people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he said Only that. economy right. can, mm -hmm. all right? That's kind of a, you know, that, that indicates, you know, he's a, he's a, a char characteristic. So that should please the Chinese, you know, CCP's, you know, uh, eyes and ears. However, by from on the other hand, the Terry Go, you know, uh, he's, uh, you know, uh, like I said earlier, that he's not a very uh, uh, stable. Sometimes his attitude. He used to be a, used to be a business, you know, success story. Okay, has been very popular. Has become a role model for a lot of Taiwanese people, even the Chinese people as well. 
However, suddenly, the, just uh, since several months ago, he became a political kind of a, you know, the go between political the third party. So that somehow you know surprised people. Okay, so so look, the, his polling rate had dropped. So now, as you say that the, his polling around ten percent. Although today or yesterday, I spot a new stat. You know, maybe it's rising a little bit. Okay, and at uh, the same time, you know, the the, the polling of uh, Lai and uh, even the whole and even Ke dropped a little bit. Mm -hmm. However, no matter how much he writes, his popularity, you know, the polling, his you know, approval rating can hardly ri rival those of the other three mm -hmm. candidates. Mm -hmm. So I don't think I don't. I, I would take hardly that believe that you know Terry Go would become the presidential you know candidate I, I, at the end. Definitely, I, I don't think. But but I think that he's a. Uh, someone told me that. The way he is campaigning, the mm -hmm. way you know he's behaving these past few months mm -hmm. is rather a process. Okay, he's simply trying to uh, to uh, review his grudge against the KMT mm -hmm. for 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 selecting Ho over Guo. Okay. So that's kind of he's getting personal. Okay, so he but he has a, he has a, he has the money to to get personal. Right. He, <laughs> has a, he has he has he has a, he has a sword right. to, to get to do whatever he wants to do. However, now now that he reached a certain okay objectives, I definitely say okay. Look, you have you know you have take you know you have run the risk of your uh, lifelong popularity. Mm -hmm. Why bother to to ruin it mm. before the end of this uh, you know this whole election? So I think he's not a he's not a you know unwise person. Definitely, mm -hmm. he will try to exert some wisdom. You okay. see, it's a common saying. It doesn't take genius to get this figure out. Why bother? So I think I won't be surprised if he's going to withdraw. He's uh, in the right. campaign. Yeah, so your when predictions, the time comes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, you know, let's take into account the role of uh, the United States. Uh, okay. Terry Gold's running mate, uh, Tammy Lai, as you mentioned earlier, yeah. renounced her U.S. citizenship unusually quickly in 35 days. Mm -hmm. uh, some have suspected that the U.S. expedited this to allow Gore to register as a candidate uh, because this is not normal in terms of the length mm -hmm. of the application process and also uh, the finish uh, you know, of the process. How could uh, in adver advertently benefits William Lai? Is the U.S. helping Lai, you think? There's two possible reasons why they could have expedited this. One is just simply because there's a lot of public attention on this. And if they didn't approve it, it would look like they were interfering with the elections. Mm -hmm. But if they do expedite it quickly, it also could be interpreted as they're you know, getting involved in the mm -hmm. elections. Mm -hmm. So it could be looked at either way. So it kind of it's a no-win for the Americans. Um, but I, I'm pretty sure that they would not, that the, the Americans would not want uh, Terry Go to win. Uh, for example, among you know, as, as you mentioned, he's made some comments on democracy, which I think the United States would not appreciate. Right. He's also uh, repeatedly said uh, that he do he doesn't want to buy U.S. Uh, munitions or mm -hmm. weapons because it's turning Taiwan into an ammunition dump mm -hmm. and it's provoking China. So, and his proposal for the defense of Taiwan is an 80,000 strong robot army. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think from the United States perspective, Terry Goh would be the worst possible candidate, but I'm pretty sure that they can see that he's not got a very strong chance of winning. Right, Ambassador, you were uh, operating ambassador, uh, you know, serving the government of Taiwan. So, so according to your knowledge, is it unusual for uh, such re renunciation process to finish that quick, uh, just in 35 days? Well, uh, given my, uh, my experience, my working experience in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. As you know, I, I was posted in Washington right. uh, twice. And at the time, I was in charge of the political section and congressional leading off in our tech office in Washington. So I somehow knew you know, the, uh, the American political culture, also including their foreign policy. Mm. So in this contest, uh, to quote you know, the current AIT head person, Madame Rosenberger, mm. Laura Rosenberger, she has been on for visiting Taiwan three times as you have known that for the past few months. And he, uh, even in her first, um, the last visit, recent visit, she uh, again publicly announced that the US policy for, the, uh, for Taiwan's upcoming election, we take no sides. We take no sides. So, you know, God not getting involved. So, of course, this is an official statement. And uh, from my experience, the US, yeah, I think that, that would be uncounterproductive, if not unwise. For American government to uh, to leave some you know proof or some indication that they're getting involved in the c coming election 
of Taiwan and or, or the election of any countries involved. I think U.S. government has learned something over the past few years. Mm -hmm. Whenever you know the U.S. used to be get, getting involved in some of the, the, the other countries' domestic parties, but the result is kind of most of the cases is kind of counterproductive. Mm -hmm. So at this time, the U.S. will not be uh, following the repeating uh, the, their their the, the same mistakes. Okay. Uh, the next question, actually, you. You both living in Taiwan, especially you've been here for more than three decades, right? So I, <laughs> we, we can view you as a Taiwanese <coughs> citizen. So from your perspective, um, what characteristics should Taiwan's next person have? I mean, this is the, in general, we talk about the welfare of the country, of the nation. Should, the, should they prior, uh, prioritize U.S. or China ties? Or should um, domestic concerns like the, uh, an aging population or high uh, housing costs take priority? Maybe Donovan. Uh, well, <coughs> I think, I, I mean, I, they, I think that, you know, all the presidential candidates are capable of walking and chewing gum at the same time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think they'll have multiple priorities. And they also, it, it's worth noting that in Taiwan's political system, th there's the president and the premier. And so the premier will probably be the one who will be looking more right. at solving things along the lines of housing and, and demographics rather than the president. The president traditionally has been more focused on relations with the United States, China, Japan. And the elections traditionally here in, in Taiwan have been about Taiwan's national identity, sovereignty, handling cross-strait and U.S. relations. Um, and that is primarily the difference between the, uh, the KMT and the DPP. Mm. You know, that's the fundamental difference. If you actually look at their pol domestic politics, there's not much difference between the DPP and the KMT. Generally speaking, what happens is, is a new administration will come in from either party. They will take the major policy initiatives from the previous government, mm. repackage them under a new name. Right, but the same substance. It's the same substance. Mm. And they'll maybe tweak it a little bit and add in a few pet projects in there. But essentially, it's, it's very, very similar as far as economic policies. You know, uh, pretty much their domestic policies are pretty much identical. Mm. Um, and if you actually look at the campaign promises that you see coming out of the campaigns, they're all pretty, they're all ideologically basically identical. Mm -hmm. So you can see the, you know, it's I, a subsidies yeah. here and that sort of thing. I see your point, but what if uh, KMT candidates, candidate Ho Yo is get, uh, get elected? I think the uh, cross trade policy would have be much different or it's going to be very different from uh, now. So, you know, what's the prediction of that if the KMT or KMT candidates, Hoyoi, or any kind of combination between KMT and also the TPP candidates combined, if they win the next election, how, how would that look like uh, cross well, relations? Okay, if, Ho if Ke wins, uh -huh. uh, the major problem that he has, and maybe you can address this, Mr. Mm -hmm. Mr. Ambassador, uh, <laughs> in a little bit, but right. is that Ke Wen does not accept the 1992 consensus. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. And that has been a precondition of China's to speak to any Taiwan authorities, as, mm -hmm. they, as they say it. So that'll be a major stumbling block with the Ke presidency. Um, now, Ho Yui has said that he accepts the 1992 consensus and he wants to continue uh, Ma Ying Zhou's policies. Um, now, Ma Ying Zhou, uh, you know, Ma Ying Zhou's policies essentially moved Taiwan significantly closer to China. Um, but he was not strong on, on national defense. He brought uh, the defense spending as a percentage of GDP down to below 2%, mm -hmm. which, uh, frankly, was dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, now, Ho has talked up a strong national defense. That seems to be the one big difference. But he is talking about opening up to tourism, trying to expand trade. Mm -hmm. um, there has also been some talk, both out of the Ke and Ho camps, about maybe reviving um, the services trade pact that was shut down mm -hmm. uh, by in the 20, 2014 mm -hmm. um, Sunflower Movement. M probably not the same exact one, but there's been some talk. Mm -hmm. uh, because has gone back and forth on whether he'd support that. Okay, um, yeah, Ambassador, so what <laughs> ideal president, the next well, one okay. in Taiwan? <coughs> First, if I may uh, politely uh, okay, sure. uh, yeah. make some uh, you know, minor correction mm -hmm. about Kurt's position with regard to uh, you know, the mainland China's uh, situation. He's not saying no to the 1992 consensus. No, it's not, it doesn't, that's not that he doesn't accept that. What he's trying to, uh, to uh, get, get his position known is that he's, he's saying 
given the past, you know, the 30 years si since the 1992, over, over 30 years have passed, mm -hmm. it's about time for us to give a, a try to give a new interpretation, mm. okay, or investigation of the 1992 consensus. Let alone that, you know, Xi Jinping has about some three or four years ago has given new interpretation for that. So I think that's a ch mainland China's, right. you mm -hmm. know, fault to twist the meaning of an original 1992 consensus. So should we Taiwan follow suit to whatever she says? I think, you know, Cohen is kind of a realistic, he's practical, you know, after all, you know, he's a surgeon. Okay, he said, we should, we should give a new meeting. Okay, so that's the first point I'd like to make, if you don't mind. Secondly, about a new uh, uh, the head of, you know, the government, the head of the country, what he should do? I think that comes to the conventional debate about any democracies, which one is more important, mm -hmm. foreign policy or domestic policy? When I was uh, watching that, you know, I think, uh, I don't know who, whoever said that. Okay, I think that any, any, in any democracy, domestic policy, domestic policy is always the number one. Mm -hmm. So given, given the, the increasing amount of uh, challenges facing Taiwan these days, externally and internally, I think that the new president should, okay, should uh, give a full attention, to full attention to either one of these two issues. Okay, uh, Ambassador Zhao, yeah. Donovan, thank you for the great insights. Okay. In this episode, we dedicated some time to discussing the internationally known businessman Terry Gould. Even though he is lagging far behind in the presidential race, we also provided an update on the Blue White Coalition plan in this race. Did you enjoy our show? Leave us a comment on our YouTube channel. See you soon.